So, I think we are live. Okay, so, should we just reposition the camera? Get in the middle? In the middle. Okay. All right, so you're watching there, yeah, don't watch there. Okay, so, um, welcome to World Code Club, lockdown edition. Uh, my name's John, and, and this is Ben. Is ben. Um, so, uh, okay, so, where it seems like so long ago now we do code clubs at little libraries um we do it at wallacey birkenhead and west kirby and since lockdown we've been doing videos and the idea is that we work through a project on the code club website and hopefully you guys follow along at home and do the project as well so ideally you'll be able to watch us on um, the television or a tablet or anything that you can watch YouTube on and then you'll have a computer where you follow along um, so we've got a few people watching and we may as well get started and um, if you have any questions you can put them in the chat um, Ben will keep an eye on that and we'll try our best to to answer them all right Okay, so today we're going to be looking at HTML and CSS. Let's change the view so you can see our desktop. Cool. All right, so there's lots of links on our website, wirralcodeclub.org. Uh, so check that out. What we're going to be doing, we're just going to go to Google. Yeah, do you want to do it, Ben? So if you type in Code Club Projects. I'm not typing. Alright, so he's just gone to Google and he types in the words Code Club Projects. Alright, so um, if anybody's watching and so I guess this is for parents, if you've got like really little ones, HTML is probably not a good place to start. Um, so if you do have any little, really little ones following along, probably um, Scratch is better so if you're following along and this is too complicated jump over to the channel because we've got some scratch videos there as well um, and if anybody's following along and it's we're going too quick I think you can actually press pause and it'll stop the video and then you'll just press play when you want to carry on so um, Ben's gone to Google and he's put in Code Club Projects and the first link that comes across is projects.raspberrypi.org uh, If anybody doesn't know what Code Club is, uh, it's a charitable foundation of Raspberry Pi where they've got thousands of volunteers that go out into the community, libraries, schools, um, and then normally in person they'll teach the kids, normally 8 to 13, how to um, code, the basics of coding. So we look at Scratch, we look at Microbit, uh, we look at HTML, we look at Blender, uh, as I say, today we're looking at HTML. And what HTML is, is stands for Hypertext Markup Language. Have you ever done any HTML in school? No? Okay, well, you're going to learn. We've only done Scratch in okay. school. And it's what uh, web pages are made up of. If we were to look at kind of what goes on under the hood of a web page, uh, we'd see lots and lots of HTML. And then a little bit further down the line, we'll use CSS, which stands for cascading style sheets and that's kind of what makes the web pages look pretty the colors the layout uh, but we'll learn as we go through all right so we've gone to google and we've put in code club projects and we've gone to we've clicked on the first link that comes up all right so there's lots and lots of projects that are free to use on the raspberry pi website on the code club website but we're going to go to html and css uh, module one and we'll start off we'll see how long it takes to go through um, if we've got time we'll do a couple of projects uh, if we don't we'll just do the first one and the idea is for the next few weeks we'll be working through these projects and learning a little bit more HTML and CSS each week all right so have you never done this when you've been going to code club mm, no. no all right 
Um, okay, so happy I birthday. Think I was, I've um, attempted Python once. Python. I haven't did HTML. All right. Uh, well, hopefully you, you'll enjoy learning this. In this project, you'll be introduced to HTML and CSS by learning how to make a customized birthday card. So what you'll find with the projects on the Code Club website is the first thing that they do is they show you how the project is supposed to look when it's finished. All right, we're gonna be using an editor called Trinket. Uh, and we'll talk about that more in a moment. But So this is what it's gonna look like. It's a birthday card. So we've got this button here, click to open. And then it opens and then it's got the message inside. All right, uh, what will you learn? I've actually clicked on that earlier on and I know that it doesn't work, so don't worry about that. Click on this button at the bottom. What is HTML? HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language, the language used to make websites. Let's have a look at an example. All right, so it talks about the fact that you're gonna be using Trinket, and I'll tell you how to open that in a minute. Uh, so the project, okay, so it asks us to open Trinket, doesn't it? So if we click on the link, all right, so if anybody's not managed to open the project and just wants to go directly to Trinket, um, you can type it into your browser. So it's, um, Okay, so the link is jump cc slash web hyphen intro. And if you were to type that into your browser, it would open the Trinket project. All right, so if you've got the project open and you've got Trinket open, we'll just be clicking between the two. All right, so this is some HTML. So because we've, we've opened the project, it's already got some HTML defined. Um, so the project should look like this. And the way Trinket works is it's nice that we type the code in the left column and it gives us the preview of how it would look in the browser in the right hand column. All right. The code that you can see on the left is HTML and on the right is Trinket. You can see the web page that the HTML code has made. All right, so the first thing that it talks about, Ben, is it talks about tags. HTML uses tags to build web pages. Look for this HTML code on line eight. So what we see in Trinket is each of the lines is numbered, and that's good because if I'm saying to Ben or if I'm saying to somebody else, go and look at this piece of code, I'd say, look at this piece of code on line eight. So HTML uses tags to build web pages. Look at the HTML on line eight. And then it's got, we can see that it's got it's what, it's a P tag. It's what's called a paragraph tag. P is an example of a tag and short for paragraph. You can start a paragraph with P and end a paragraph with P. So one of the things that you'll notice, Ben, is that, so if we're, trying to um, so if we're kind of given a characteristic to some content on the page we encapsulate it with tags it encapsulate means that you know we'll put a tag at the beginning and we'll put a tag at the end so more likely than not if we're putting html around something to characterize it it's always got an opening tag and it's got a closing tag as well. So here we can see that the P, the paragraph tag, we've got the opening tag, and then we've got the closing tag as well. And 99% of the time, the closing tag will have the slash, 
So a tag always opens with an open angle bracket, a closing angle bracket, um, whatever the tag is, so P, and then the end tag always has that slash in. All right, if you are looking to, can you tell me how would you do an angle bracket on the keyboard, Ben? It would be the, uh, it would be uh, so on shift our, and then those two. On our keyboard, it's next to the letter M, isn't it? Or So what, what would you call them in school? Is that a less than and greater than symbol? All right, maybe I've just made angle bracket up. So if you do, the tags are less than and greater than uh, the, around the P's. Okay, so P is an example of a tag and short for paragraph. You can start a paragraph with P and end a paragraph with P. All right, so it says, can you spot any other tags? So if we're looking in this HTML, can you see any other tags? All right, so if you look at the word running, yeah. can you see any other tags? Well, it would be the B, the two Bs are on All right. Isn't it? What do you think the, the B tag is doing? Uh, so if we just zoom out again. So if we look at the... Well, uh, isn't it... Well, the B, the B would stand for bold. Bold, yeah. So then that would make the text bold. Yeah. So the people who make these websites, who, who make websites all the time, they're going to start to remember what these tags are, aren't they? So if I'm sitting and I'm writing code for a website, I'll know that I want to make it bold. So I know to use the B tag. If I want to do a paragraph, I know that it's the P tag because I've done it that many times before. I can just remember what it is. So there's other things as well. We can see right up at the top, there's the HTML tag which tells us that it's the it's a HTML document. There's the head tag, which tells us that that's the head. And we'll talk about that more in a moment. And then there's the body tag and all the content goes into the body. So I think the project talks about that. All right, so we'll click on the answer and it says one other tag you might have spotted is B, which stands for bold. And then it says, here are some others, HTML, uh, marks the start and end of the HTML document. Head is where stuff like the CSS goes, and we'll talk about that later. And body is where the website content goes. All right. Uh, so make a change to one of the paragraphs of the text in the HTML file on the left and click run. All right. So Ben, if you change that line to something else, just type something else in. Mm. So we're making a change to the HTML document. All right, so if you put, just put, hello, I am Ben, something like that. So you just, you just move down oh, the line there, um, just be careful. All right, I'll work on it. All right, let, let, let's just, what we'll do is we'll move back up. Now, if you, if you make a, a mistake what you can do is you can press the control key on the keyboard and Z and it goes backwards yeah. all right so if you want to if you type in hello I am Ben oh, or um, something like that So the project says to click run, but I think the way Trinket's handling it is Trinket's actually doing it. At, it's set to auto run. So if anybody's using it and it's not set to auto run, just click the arrow that points down and set it to auto run. And what that means is that as you type in to the HTML document, you're seeing a live preview on the right hand side. And we see that as we're making those changes, 
they're automatically reflected in the right hand side. So, you know, if we take the second paragraph out, you can see that automatically reflected. So your website is just, hello, I am Ben. All right, so what's next? If you've made a mistake and want to undo any of the changes, uh, you can click the menu button and then click reset. So if we wanted to reset the project, don't do it, but we'll just show you how. Click the menu in the top right and you can click reset, but we're not gonna do that. Um, we click the three line icon in the top left and then it collapses the menu down again. Okay, so. To undo just the last thing that you did, press Control and Z, which we've already mentioned, haven't we? I was just looking at the things. Just... Okay. All right, some people are chatting away. I think everybody's okay though. All right, so you don't need a Trinket account to save the projects. If you don't have a Trinket account, click the down arrow and then click the link. So one of the things that you can do with Trinket is, so you don't need to save it, but you can share. So there's the down arrow and one of the options says link. So if I click on link and it will give me this Trinket link. So um, if Ben is working on something for school, wants to send it to his teacher or send it to a classmate, he can open, uh, he can click on the share, generate a link, send the link to somebody, they can open the link, and then they can see what Ben's done. So you can send people links from the trinket. Um, all right. If you have a trinket account, the easiest way is to save your web page. Uh, the easiest way to save your web page is to click the remix button on the top of Trinket and this will save a copy. So if anybody does want to create a Trinket account, probably go and ask your mum, your dad or your guardian. Don't do it now. Wait until the end of the session. Uh, but the good thing there is you can save all of your projects in one place. Uh, Trinket is free. I think there is a paid for version. Don't. Nobody pay for it. Uh, just use the free version. It's all we need. So. All right, challenge, add another paragraph. So can you add a third paragraph to the text of your web page below the other two? So we've actually deleted one in our example, Ben. Um, so let's go ahead and let's create a paragraph. So how do you think, what do you think the easiest way to create another paragraph would be? Would it just be, and then? Yeah, so you need to put the opening tag in which is less than P. And then P and then yeah, P. greater than. Yeah. So what Trinket's done there is it's automatically, so you've put the first tag in, you've put the opening tag. Do you see what it's done? And then it's made the closing it's tag. It's automatically put the closing tag in. So And it's positioned the cursor in between the two tags. So you can just go ahead and write your content in. Do you want to go ahead and write something? Um, so what were you playing? on the switch today. Were you playing Minecraft um, or Fortnite or? Uh, well, I was playing, I played Jedi Fallen Order on the Xbox and then. Alright, so just type in, I was playing on the Xbox today or? I... Do you want to put a capital in? I didn't think I, um... All right. So, 
Another way to do things is you can actually, if we were to just highlight that paragraph and copy it, and then we can paste it. So that's another way to do it. Uh, what does the project say? Remember that your new paragraph should start with a P and end with a P. Cool, we've done that. Can you add bold and underline text to the new paragraph? Right, so it's teaching us a new tag there, isn't it? U stands for underline. So but then how would you do that? Because you've already did the P. Yeah, so if we would wanted you to... Would you get rid of the P and do the U? No, would you... you would put the U tags inside the P. So do you want to do that? So we'll start off by doing, at the beginning, you. we'll do the U. And then at the end, because we've got to put a. Yeah, no, that doesn't really work. Does All it? right, so automatically put it in, but we'll just delete the closing tag. And, and do, do you see one of the things that Trinket's telling us there? It's got the red crosses to the left-hand side. It and says it's, that it's wrong. It's telling us that the... The code is missing something. So we move to the end of the line mm -hmm. and then we do the closing tag. So can you remember what the difference is with oh, the closing wait, tag? It's, um... So it's it's not a back oh, wait, no. backslash, it's is it? A... It's a four it's under the, the question mark. And then you just So the closing tags have always got that that slash in. And then if you look at your preview on the right hand side it's underlined it. I was looking at that before because it had already underlined it, so I didn't notice the cross. All right. Can we make the, the middle paragraph so that it's bold? Mm. All right. And then if you can you delete the closing tag that it's automatically added in? So be bold now. B for bold at the beginning and then B at the end but with the slash. All right. Okay. Uh, da -da 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 -da. All right. So we've learned some basics about HTML. We've learned what some tags do. We've learned that tags always come in pairs. There's always the opening tag and the closing tag. And the closing tag has that slash in to signify. Um, all right, so it says, what is CSS? Okay, CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheets, and it's a language used to style web pages and make them look nice. Um, so if we were looking at a website and we were to take the CSS away, it would look completely different. If we're going to the code club website here and we break it so that it's not pulling the css in anymore can i can i break the css um, So is this the CSS? Here we go. This is the CSS. Oh, here. um, Ed said then we played Minecraft and Fortnite. Ah, okay. Uh, so before before I played with Ed, I played Jedi Fallen Order. Ah, okay. Do you want to say hello to Ed? Hi, Ed. <laughs> So I'm just trying to break the CSS on the site. So there you go. I've kind of broken yeah, it. Yeah. Not really. Because then the writing is not along the yeah. top. We start to break the CSS and it changes the layout. So the, um, 
Okay, so... Don't you need to fix that? No, nah, it's fine. It's just in the browser. It's not on the live site. Um, CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheets, and it is the language used to style web pages and make them look nice. This code links your web page to a CSS file. See if you can find it in the head of a HTML document. So, uh, all right. Hmm. Do I have a good example of a site? Um, da -da 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 -da. We'll go back. Let's see if we can find it on the Will Co Club website. So if you are viewing a website and you ever want to look at the HTML, if you just right click on it, and if you do inspect, it brings up the yes. HTML of the site and you can see everything. So here's the head here. Yeah. So would you be able to break it from there? No. Uh, you want the owner of the site? You can't break the site. What it's doing is it's just showing you the code within your browser. So you can change it within your browser, but it doesn't change it on the server. Wait, so will it change it for you? It changes it for me. Um, so this is a WordPress site, so there's lots and lots of junk in here. But if we look, so here we go, link style sheet ID href so what a href is is it it says bring this file in um, did that change anything anyway there's a few different style sheets that are being brought in and they're all being brought in within the head okay so the, this code links your website to a CSS file see if you can find it in the head we've we found it in the head CSS lists all the properties for a particular tag Click on the style.css tab to see the CSS code of your website. So what Trinket does is it allows us, um, a website's got two files. It's got the index file, which is the content, with like the text, and then it's got the style.css file. So then in the, yeah. So. So you could do, you could do like, yeah. Yeah. Like yellow. It, or it, determines how like, um, the well. document looks. So you've got the content in the index and you've got how it looks within the style sheet. All right. Find this code. So within the style sheet, it's telling us to find the P. Yeah. So what what do you think that's doing, Ben? So that's very specific. It's the P. Where else have we seen a P? Well, is it um like with the color? So is it like turning the paragraph? That's why it's P. So that's the P tag, isn't it, within the yeah. HTML? And what this is saying is it's setting the characteristics out it's for anything. It's turning the paragraph into blue because it has a P there. Yeah, it's saying anything that has a P, a paragraph tag, turn it blue. So and then it, if that didn't have body there and that had P there, then wouldn't that be, um, that would be the paragraph and then... So you see we've added a background to the P tag as well? That's really bad, isn't it? Yeah. You can't even see the actual writing. Okay. So, um, so it says change the word black in the CSS code to blue. You should see the text color turn blue. And that's exactly what we did. I've never done this project before. Um, okay. So do, does that make sense, the fact that this is kind of what's in there? This is the content, the text, and then the CSS file is determining the colours and the layout, yeah? Yeah. All right. Challenge, add more styles. Okay. Can you make the paragraph... Uh, can you make the paragraphs of text orange? Can you make the background grey by changing the body property? So, 
Right, I made some changes a minute ago, but do you want to go and make those changes now, Ben? Um, the changes back, or...? Just, no, change them to something else. Okay. So do you want to start off? Change the background at the top. All right, let me, let me show you something. So colours within websites, you can literally just type the name of a colour. So we've used yellow, we've used blue, yeah. and we've used cyan. But you can also use something called hex. Um, so if I just go to Google and type in uh, hex colour picker, um, so there's there's websites that you can go to. It looks like Google actually allow us to do it as well. So we've got this slider at the bottom, which allows us to choose uh, a main colour. And then we've got this picker up at the top, which allows us to choose a like a variant of that colour. So if you choose a colour that you like on there, yeah. So do you see down here, we've got this hex value, which is hash 922EAB, yeah? I'm gonna copy it. So just copy it, right? If you're if somebody's following along and wants to copy it, you can do right click and copy, or you can highlight and do control and C. And then would you paste the... Yeah, um, so we're gonna just delete the word yellow, no, and then we're gonna do. Gonna so we can do. We can either do Control and V for paste, or the other way to do it is right click. And then. And paste. paste yeah. And that'll do the color picking thing. All right. Do you want to change the color of the paragraph text as well? So, um, do you want to use the color picker again? Yeah. Oh, no. So then... Yeah, if you highlight the hex value just below, right click. And then right click. Right, just, so we use, we're using a trackpad, which is a bit tricky. Yeah. It's I'm, easy with a mouse. I'm, I've not really used trackpad. Right click, click and copy. Yeah, and then... Yeah, go, go on. You, you do it. All right. So one of the things that you're going to notice with the CSS as well is, do you see after the value that you put in, um, there's a semicolon, which is yeah. the dot and the dash at the bottom. And that, that needs to be there. Because if we were to remove the semicolon, so this, this here is the semicolon, yeah? Can you see? Can you see? If we were to remove that, it br it, it breaks. Up. It would. Do you see? There's there's those errors. There's the exclamation and the cross. It's and it's, it doesn't recognize the code in there. So. But if we put the semicolon back in, it works. Wait, again. why does it break the code underneath it? I just thought. <laughs> ben just thought. <laughs> Why does it break the code underneath it, though? Because um, if you think of it kind of... So does it break the code underneath? Yeah. Look. It, it shows that it's broken. Okay, no, it does, doesn't it? It's because it's everything between... What are these called? Are these called parentheses? Are they called parentheses? These these brackets? No, these they're, not curly, they're not parentheses. Oh, Kelly brackets? Kelly brackets? <laughs> what would you call them? All right, don't worry. Yeah, it's basically, it, it's breaking anything within the curly brackets, isn't it? I've used them before in school, I just don't know what they're called. All right. So anyway, so if your code isn't working, we need to make sure that those semicolons are at the end and at the, the same. If the colon was to disappear, then that, that would break it as well. So one of the hardest things is if something breaks, we've got to check through the code and make sure that everything's formatted correctly. Okay, so we've—I think we've—we've we've done. We've done what it yeah. what it wanted us to. All right. So making making a card. Let's use what you've learned about HTML and CSS 
to make your own custom birthday card. All right, so it says open this trinket. It's a different one. All right, and this one doesn't have a quick link to get to. All right, what we'll do, so if you're in the project, click on the link. If you're not in the project, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paste it into YouTube, paste it into the comments. All right, Ed's saying, I chose my background as cyan and text as dark green. Good work, Ed. All right, so we've put a link to the project. Yeah. All right, so this is this is a link to a new project, isn't it? Um, so let's have a look. Uh, we've written a lot of code to get you started. But the birthday card looks pretty boring, so you're going to make some changes to the HTML and CSS. Click the button at the front of the card and you should see it open to reveal the inside. Do you want to do that? So you want to click on the button? And it opens it. All right. Go to line 14 of the HTML code and try editing the text to customize the card. Okay, so line 14, can you find line 14? And we're going to change it from being a happy birthday card to being a happy code club card. Okay. All right, happy code club. That's kind of the style of the robots. It is, it is. As well, so. Um, okay, so can you find the HTML code for the robot image and change the robot to sun? So can you find the code for the robot? Which line do you think the image is well, on. Well, it's that one, isn't it? So what line's that? That's line 17. All right. So, and how do you think you change it from robot to sun? Well, it will be... So deleting the word robot and, and changing sun. sun. And what... We've left .png on the end. What do you think .png means? Uh, I think it's something about, like... The picture. Yeah, so PNG is an image format, isn't it? Um, what does PNG stand for? Portable Network Graphics. Which, okay, so we don't need to worry about that. The main thing is that we know that it's... How is that portable? Though? Dot .png means that, you know, if we see dot .png, it's an image format. Yeah. Okay. So we've changed it from a robot to a sun. And then are you going to be able to change the... All right. Oh. We didn't need a hint. It's just telling us where it was. You can use any of the words boy, diamond, dinosaur, flowers, girl, rainbow, robot, spaceship. All right. So basically what's happened is the, guy at, the guys at Raspberry Pi have... Um, made some images available to us with these names. So these words, these images are available because somebody at Raspberry Pi has, has uploaded them and made them available. Can we change it to spaceship? Can we make it into a spaceship? So because it's a, a, a file, File names never really have spaces in them. So can you take the space oh. out? It's like a hashtag. Yeah. Does that Blue. work? There you go. So it's there's there's our spaceship. Squashed. All right. Okay. You can also edit the CSS code of your birthday card. Click on the tab for style.css. The first part of all the CSS styles for the outside of the card. 
Ah, the first part of the CSS styles is for the outside of the card. It's a funky combination. So if we click on style.css, so this is, um, okay, do you see this? Div id yeah. equals outside. So what does, I've used divs, but I've never, what does a div, what does div stand for? Div. In Division. Uh, in HTML. It was one of your suggested. The div tag defines the division or section in a HTML document. The div tag is used as a container for HTML elements. Okay, so I mean, a div, a division, okay. or a divider. So I think the thing that, the way that I talk about them in work is I'll talk about them as being a container. It's something that we put things inside. So the div here is just, you know, if you think of that, that gray box, that is the div, it's the container. So, so we've made the container green and we put some content inside it. We put text at the top, happy code club. We put a picture of a rocket and then we put a button. Wait. So the front of the card is the container. So then that's the outside of the card. Yeah. I don't... <laughs> I'm trying to think how not to make it too complicated. All right. So div is a divider or a container. And it's just what we put things inside. So what do they say? They've said that we're going to style. We can change the way that the container looks. So if we're looking down this CSS for the outside container or the outside div there's no color there is there all right should we do you want to add another line in so there's all these lines that are doing things but we'll add another line in so press what do you mean? so we've clicked on the right hand side of the semicolon on the last line and line at nine and then press enter all right type color and i think that the way css and html works is I think we may have to do the American spelling, but let's try it anyway. Mm. So what comes at the end? What's the divider? It's what? a colon, isn't it? Can you add a colon in? So that is shift and then the key next to the L on our keyboard. Yeah. So yeah. Oh, and that's a, so I think, a colon. Isn't it supposed to be a semicolon? No. Okay, so do you see here? Do you see yeah. here? So each of these... Each of these lines is setting a characteristic for that element oh, outside. So like translation and then like if you Tran were going transition. to do a, if you, right. yeah. So if we look, it's got... So if you were going to do a list, then like position and then list the position. All right. So we look at line four here, yeah? Line four is setting the characteristic of background colour. And at the moment, it's like grey, isn't it? Yeah. All right, so let's change this. But if we remember, it's always what is the characteristic, so background colour, and then we separate it with a colon, the two dots. Yeah. And then like grey, which is the value, what are we setting that characteristic to be? It could say blue, it could say yellow, it could say a hex value. And then we have to terminate it or end the line with the semicolon. So can you change, can you change the background color of the outside container? Wait, so no, do you just want to type a, something in? Um, so you could do so. light, if you put the word light in, L-I-G-H-T, uh, and then uh, hyphen, which is the dash in the middle, hyphen, yeah, oh. and then... What do you want? Light green? Okay. This is some... All right. Oh. We, we wouldn't do that, would we? Mm. It needs I'm to be... I'm just used to yep. pressing... Um... All right. I'm not sure if that's worked, but let's have a look anyway. It's not worked, has it? No. So it doesn't, it doesn't recognise really. light green. If we just do... So if we do green... All right, so green works, doesn't it? 
So one of the ways that I learn some basic HTML is um, you know, if I ever want to know something, I'll just Google it. So I could say uh, valid. I'm just going to Google and I'm typing in valid uh, HTML colors, color names. Um, so W3Schools is a good website to go to if you're wanting to learn some HTML. But you see it's got a list of all of the different color types. So you know, it's got some crazy ones in. But then on the right-hand side, it's also got what the, the, the corresponding hex value is. Yeah. So do you want to pick a color from there? Um, maybe orange. All right. So right, right click. Click, um, I think what, what you need to do, Ben, is oh, highlight it. Oh. Highlight it. Right click. Copy. And then paste it on the... And then we go to... So go on, do you want to delete green? Mm. Mm -mm, um, oh, what's happening? I don't know. If it's someone dim one. Uh, here we go. So you want to paste it? So right click. No. no. <laughs> I right click. All right, it's, it's a tracker pad, isn't it? Right click and paste. So there you go. So now we've got an orange background. Cool. So what does it say? Um, da -da 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 -da. Change, ah, change the background to light green. Um, you can also change the size of an image. Go to, all right. So the picture, all right. We with CSS we use things called IDs, yeah. And so what the ID does is it allow it gives like a unique uh, identifier or value. To say, you know, so we know that the outside of the card, the ID is outside. The title ID is outside title. The picture, the ID is outside pick. So it just gives like a like a name or a value to that element on the page. So outside pick, if we look in the CSS, do you see down here on line 23? Yeah, it says outside. Outside pick. pick. So they're the characteristics for the picture so you can change the size so the value for outside pick is the width is and the measurement for images on on the internet is pixels or px so it's set to 150 pixels wide by 150 pixels tall do you want to change that mm. do you want to make it bigger or smaller yeah, so just, yeah, that's it. So, what are you going to change it to? 200? So if you just change, if you just change the height and not the width, it, ah, it looks all right. Yeah. I wanted to unstretch it. Okay. Um, da -da -da -da. You can also change the size of an image, go to the outside, pick CSS code, and change the width and height of the outside image to 200 px, which stands for pixels. All right, so we've clicked on the CSS uh, tab at the top. We've scrolled down to outside pick, and we've changed the values on line. Well, we've only changed the value on line 25. These but the, uh, ads using completely different colors. That's okay. No, it's like just, completely, the colors are different to each other. He's just being original, completely isn't he? Completely different to each other. All right, so the font can be changed too. Go to outside title CSS and change the font family to, all right. Comics. If anybody's dad is it or dad or mom is a designer then you need to go and tell them about this and they're going to love it we're going to change the font to comic sans all right um so if you so can you see font font family for outside title and what what's it set to at the moment 
So what does it, do you remember what it said in? It says, was there a space? Space, uh, sands, and then there was something else at the, the end. So if you do space, and then MS. All right, so if we scroll back out, have we got that right? Yeah. Yeah. So that's Comic Sans. All right. Uh, and it says to set the font size to 16 points. So fonts, these are fonts. Any text on the screen is a font. Font means like the style and the way that it looks. Like so, but um, and the measurement for the size of a font is points. So, what did it say? Set it to sixteen. Okay. Do you want to set it to be a bit bigger? Do you want to set it to maybe twenty-two? Yeah. yeah. Set it to like twenty. Twenty. Yeah. It's pretty big, but it um, squishes the. Go in a bit. All right. So you can use other fonts, for example, Arial, Impact, or Tahoma. All right. So if you guys come back later, you can have a play around. You can change things. You can change the fonts. Um, we're running out of time, so we're just going to carry on with. The project for now we're not going to stop and do these side things all right so we clicked on the link at the bottom challenge create a personalized card use everything you've learned about html and css to finish making a personalized card and it doesn't have to be a birthday card it could be a christmas or any other occasion uh so we're gonna uh, Uh, we're going to change the message inside, which still says happy birthday. So if we go back to the index and we've been focusing on this container, div id equals outside. But then there's also, so, there should be another container. So da, 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 da. Uh, div id inside. equals inside. So, it's, so, so that's, we'll be doing the outside of the card and then inside. Yeah. So do you want to go ahead and do you want to, do you want to customize that message? So do the do the title. Inside title, a happy birthday. Oh, like happy! I keep the happy, happy. Good. No. <laughs> Good. All right, and oh, so and there's then... a there's another paragraph here, isn't there? Underneath the image, do you want to put a message there? Um, I hope you enjoy. Cool. So then, if we click it, you can see the message at the top and the message at the bottom has changed. But then the girl hasn't, because it's still girl. Yeah. So we could do sun. PNG, oh, yeah. which would change it to a sun. Oh, it's gonna be um, so it's squished. So if we do, if we look down, in the, so we've clicked on the CSS, and there should be something in here called inside pick. So if we change the width to 150, and then that fixes the image. Um, yeah, it's already so we're going to change the inside font so yeah, we're yeah. looking for a line 45 sorry at line 47 font family so the id inside a different one like Arial. yeah on line 45 we've got the id inside title which is the id for that element and then we've got line 47 which is font family what 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 font do you want to change it to Aerial. Okay. 
Are you going to make the, the font size bigger? Mm. I'm going to set it to 50, see what that does. Mm. Mm. I'm worried that 50 will be All too right. big. Let, let's preview it and see what it does. Mm. So, no. Yeah, it's a bit big. Should we set big. it to 22? No, set it to 20. 20. Oh, it says 29. It's 29. That's all right, isn't yeah. it? So, happy code club. All right, I think that's pretty much it. Let's see, are we at the end? It talks about sharing it. So remember, if you want to share your project with anybody else, you can click this little arrow up at the top, the drop down, and if you click on link, it'll give you a link to the project. You can share that with a family member or a friend, or, you know, get, Get your parent, your mum, your dad, or your guardian and send it across to us because uh, we'd like to see what you've done. Uh, send it across on Facebook, Twitter, or put it into the YouTube comments. And all right. So hopefully everybody enjoyed it. Um, if you've got any feedback, send it across. Get your mum or your daddy to send it to us. Um <laughs> And we'll be doing more sessions next week. So I think we're going to be doing four o'clock next Wednesday. 